I'm Karen Hendy, I'm a corporate partner and I'm going to talk to you about the market abuse regulation which came into force on the 3rd of July. It enhances investor protection, market integrity and harmonises the market abuse regime across the EU and it has meant a significant change to both the regime and to market practice for market participants in the UK. The first point to note is that MAR, as it's known, is not completely comprehensive, it's not fully formed and it's not packaged up in a nice little box. You need to know where to look to track the relevant aspects of it. And whilst there are definitely steps that you need to take now as a market participant, this is also an area where there are unanswered questions and grey areas. So it's something that will continue to evolve in terms of the regime itself and market practice over the coming months. Share dealing was a significant area of uncertainty in the run-up to implementation. Opmar itself doesn't even require you to have a code of share dealing as an issue. We, as a firm, would recommend it. Uh, we would also suggest that it goes beyond the 30-day close period contained in MAR to cover dealing with inside information and also to require persons discharging managerial responsibilities or PDMRs to take steps to make sure that their persons closely associated, PCAs, uh, don't deal in the relevant periods. As an issuer, you are required to notify your PDMRs in writing of their obligations to notify transactions. And as PDMR, you are required to notify in writing your PCAs. So as an issuer, you probably want to check that that has happened because, for example, people will be required to write to their spouse. When dealings occur, the PDMR or PCA has three business days to notify the FCA and the issuer. That's also the same time period within which the issuer has to report to the market. So as a practical step, you in your share dealing code as the issuer probably want to provide a shorter, say, two business day period to receive the notifications in. So inside information is the same broadly as it ever was. And as an issuer, you are still able to legitimately delay disclosing inside information. What's new is that if you do that, you have to keep a record of your decision making and you have to notify the FCA when ultimately you come to put that information out to the market. And if requested by the FCA, you will need to provide them with further details. What's also new is that when you're disclosing inside information, you have to state that on the face of the announcement. And this is something where I think we will see changes in market practice over the coming months. So perhaps issuers choosing to segregate out their inside information from other information or perhaps doing separate announcements. Because what you clearly can't do is bury your inside information in other text. So I've mentioned a couple of the key changes. There are others. How do you stay on track to keep on top of MAR in the next couple of months? Number one, make sure that you have revised your policies, your procedures, your guidance, and that you have got appropriate reporting systems in place, in particular that you're able to track and monitor your treatment of inside information, communicate responsibilities and any changes in operating processes and procedures within your organisation, and three, watch this space for further developments.